Tributes continued to pour in for Jay Briscoe after his tragic passing earlier this week, with stars paying tribute to Briscoe on last night's AEW Dynamite. However, a new report has mentioned that AEW was not allowed to do an official Jay Briscoe tribute episode of Dynamite last night due to a mandate from Warner Bros. Discovery. However, there are plans for a Ring of Honor-centric tribute show that's already been filmed and will air on Honor Club. We've got the latest details on that. Soraya turns heel seemingly last night on Dynamite. Tony Khan has spoken on a variety of topics, including C. CM Punk in AEW, possibly purchasing WWE. FTR, what is their future with All Elite Wrestling? William Regal has also spoken on how his AEW run didn't exactly go to plan. Brian Danielson has a new opponent as he heads to AEW Revolution to challenge for the AEW World Championship. Top Flight score a massive upset on Dynamite. And also, does Orange Cassidy retain his All Atlantic Championship? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. And of course, the wrestling world is still in shock, still heartbroken, still mourning over the tragic passing and loss of Jay Briscoe. Now, heading into Dynamite last night, there was a lot of discussion about what AEW was going to do because, of course, the Briscoe brothers were signed to Tony Khan contracts, specifically Ring of Honor contracts. However, because of their historically... Um, inappropriate comments or comments that had been very controversial in the past, there was a there was a mandate at one point that they couldn't be on Warner Bros. Discovery programming, i.e. AEW, so they never actually appeared on Dynamite Rampage or any of AEW's programming. Now, people coming into Dynamite thought last night, will this be a tribute show? What will it be? So fresh off the news of the tragic passing. Well, when it comes to Ring of Honor... AW slash Ring of Honor will shoot a special tribute show in honor of the late Jay Briscoe. That was late last night following AW Dynamite in Fresno, California. According to AW slash Ring of Honor owner Tony Khan, the quote special Ring of Honor tribute to the late great Jay Briscoe will be available to everyone on the Honor Club streaming service. In a follow up tweet, Khan clarified that the show wouldn't be restricted to existing subscribers of Honor Club and would also be made available on Ring of Honor's YouTube channel, saying, quote, free for everyone means free. It will be free, not behind a paywall on honor club and we'll post the tribute show in its entirety on ring of honor youtube as well also free for everyone as tonight this crew will come together to shoot a special roh event in honor of the late great jay briscoe khan wrote on twitter now, earlier on in the night, the live episode of Dynamite opened with a graphic a graphic honoring Jay, following which several wrestlers paid homage to their dear departed peer, with the likes of Jay Lethal and Best Friends wearing black armbands. The Young Bucks wore armbands with the text Jay and a heart emoji on them. Furthermore, Matt and Nick Jackson performed the Doomsday Device during their match against Top Flight, which was a tribute to the Briscoes, who performed a modified version of the top rope move, which of course was made popular by the iconic Road Warriors tag team. Brian Danielson and Bandit wore J armbands during their match as well. Uh, fans who are unaware, of course, of Briscoe's legendary exploits can visit Honor Club to watch the five greatest matches of um, the, the wrestler's career. There's obviously pretty much the entire Ring of Honor back catalogue on there. So if you do want to familiarise yourself, watch Jay Briscoe's career, almost it's in, in its entirety, specifically for Ring of Honor, starting there, winning his first Tag Team Championship in 2003, all the way up to his latest and final reign as Tag Team Champion with his brother Mark at the end of last year. Now, for those wondering why Dynamite itself wasn't a specific tribute show, well, we've got reasons for that as well, because AW reportedly, quote, wasn't allowed to do a Brody Lee-like tribute show for Jay Briscoe on last night's January 18 episode of Dynamite. Mark and Jay Briscoe had never appeared on AEW television and were essentially stuck in Ring of Honor, reportedly because Warner Bros. Discovery had made a ruling based on comments Jay had made years ago that he'd since apologized and made amends for multiple times. Instead, an ROH-branded tribute show was taped after Dynamite and Rampage that will air on Honor Club and YouTube sometime soon. Speaking on today's Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained, quote, they were signed by Tony Khan and he was unable to get them on television. And if you watch tonight's show and you were expecting something and I know a lot of people were something akin to the Brody Lee show and obviously that didn't happen there was a graphic at the start of the show and then at the very end of the show there was a mention by Excalibur a lot of guys had armbands a lot of them but there was not any kind of big tribute because they were not allowed by Warner Media to do one 
Meltzer did mention there are more plans to honor Briscoe on future Ring of Honor shows. He said, quote, so they filmed a one hour show in Fresno tonight. That'll be on Honor Club. They'll be doing another tribute show, which will be when they finally do the Ring of Honor television show. The first show will feature a lot of J matches and the tribute show taped last night will as uh, when it's all put together. I'm not sure what day it will be, but it'll be out there. There'll be another one. And then Super Card of Honor. There will also be a kind of like memorial to Jay on that show or something to honor Jay at the Supercard of Honor show in Los Angeles in late March at the Gallon Center. Now, again, I don't want to get too much into that. We're just going to cover the news this morning. Obviously, it's really sad that they couldn't do a full-blown tribute show to Jay Briscoe last night. I think people might have been expecting that. It's it's sad that Warner Bros. Discovery still enforced that mandate after his passing. Um, I am sure that the Ring of Honor tribute show will do absolutely everything to honor the legacy career life of Jay Briscoe. Is it disappointing that they couldn't put that aside and, and turn something into that, turn that show into something last night? Yes, it is. It is disappointing. But um, again, hopefully Ring of Honor's tribute show will suffice, even though it is very disappointing. Now, following um, the passing, the reports of the passing of Jay Briscoe, real knife Jamin Hugh, uh, Jamin Pugh in an auto accident uh, this week, the Ring of Honor star's wife, Ashley Pugh, uh, has posted an update on Facebook, which just makes the situation even more tragic, revealing that his daughter, Gracie, is undergoing surgery, while the family's other daughter, Jaylee, received serious injuries in the crash, saying, quote, we need prayers. Gracie is on her way into surgery on her back pew said jamin would want the whole world praying for his little girl we believe in the power of prayer pray for the doctors and everyone working on her pray for her precious legs to move again pray for jaylee who has had some pretty serious injuries but is stable and resting pray for gannon waiting at home pray for strength for all of us we have a long long road ahead of us now, in an outpouring of support from those across the professional wrestling community over the past week, one of the most touted aspects of Pew's personality was his devotion to his family. One video posted to Twitter showed Pew practicing a cheerleading routine with one of his daughters, something that many wrestlers might shy away from posting publicly, but Pew was proud and happy to share. Uh, Jamin Pew, along with his brother Mark, were mainstays, of course, in the Ring of Honor brand since the company's inception back in 2002. Together, they held the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships 13 times, including at the time of Jamin's death. Pew was also no stranger to singles gold. He was a former two-time Ring of Honor World Champion. Last year, the two brothers had a trilogy of highly acclaimed matches with Dax Howard and Cash Wheeler of FTR, culminating in a tag team dog collar match at Final Battle just over a month ago. Now, as far as details on the actual incident itself, the crash itself, Delaware State Police, they've issued a statement on the investigation into the incident that resulted in the tragic death of Jamin Pugh, Jay Briscoe. As I mentioned, Jamin tragically passed away age 38 in a car accident in Laurel, Delaware, which also took the life of another person who was driving a vehicle involved in the accident. The Delaware State Police posted the following on their website saying, quote, The Delaware State Police are investigating a fatal accident that occurred in Laurel late yesterday afternoon that resulted in the deaths of two people. On January 17, 2023, at approximately 5.09 p.m., a 2019 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 was traveling westbound on Laurel Road road just west of goose nest road at the same time a 2016 chevrolet silvernado 2500 was traveling eastbound on laurel road in the same vicinity for unknown reasons the driver of the silverado 1500 pickup truck failed to remain in her lane crossed the center line and entered the eastbound lane of laurel road directly into the path of the silverado 2500 this resulted in a head-on collision between the two pickup trucks in the eastbound lane the driver of the Silverado 1500, identified as 27-year-old Lillian Turnerhun of Frankfurt, Delaware, was wearing her seatbelt. The driver of the Silverado 2500, identified as 38-year-old Jamin Pugh of Laurel, Del Delaware, was not wearing his seatbelt. Both drivers were pronounced dead at the scene. The two passengers in Pugh's pickup truck, identified as his 12-year-old daughter and 9-year-old daughter, were both properly restrained. Both girls were taken by ambulance to an area hospital and were admitted in a critical condition. Condition. Alcohol involvement in the crash is unknown. No other vehicles were involved in the collision. The roadway was closed for approximately four hours while the scene was investigated and cleared. Delaware State Police Troop 7 Collision Reconstruction Unit continues to investigate this incident. Troopers are asking for anyone who witnessed this collision to please contact Sergeant G. Burns. Um, 
and it, again, it's it's just it's incredibly sad, incredibly sad. I mean, the wrestling world they've united in memory of Jamin Pugh with well earned tributes pouring from all corners of the industry, including from Paul Levesque, Triple H, uh, WWE sending their condolences on Aaron NXT, CM Punk, Seth Rollins, Bret Hart, FTR, and many many more. Too many to count. Certainly, as I mentioned, Dynamite was filled with the tributes from the likes of. Um, the, the Young Bucks, Jay Lethal, Brian Danielson, Bandido, and others. Excalibur, as I mentioned, ended Dynamite last night with the following words saying, quote, We are thinking of you, Jay Briscoe. You are in our hearts and minds. And as I mentioned, that tribute show was filmed after Dynamite last night as to giving an official time as to when it will be posted on YouTube or on a club. We don't know just yet, but of course, once we do, uh, we'll let you know here on the channel. There was a heel turn last night on Dynamite, and apparently it comes from Soraya. Now, a heel turn seems to have taken place on the January 18th episode of Dynamite. After Tony Storm and Willow Nightingale's match, Nightingale was attacked by Storm and Soraya as Hikaru Shida watched on. She was eventually saved by her tag team partner from Friday's AEW Rampage, uh, Ruby Soho. The development comes after last week's AEW Dynamite, where Shida cost Storm and Soraya a match against Dr. Britt Baker and AEW Women's World Champion Jamie Hayter. And because of that, Soraya told Sheeta to stay in the back for Storm's match against Nightingale. Soraya and Storm's tag team match last week on Dynamite was somewhat overshadowed by the anticipation that Mercedes Monet would actually be Soraya's tag team partner. When the rumor turned out to be untrue, it resulted in the phrase, no Mercedes, to trend on social media. The heel turn would mark both Storm and Soraya's first time as heels in All Elite Wrestling and could potentially see Shida flip from being a face in her ongoing tensions with the pair. Tensions started after Soraya announced Storm as her partner on the January 11th edition of Dynamite. Nightingale's defeat on Dynamite comes fresh off the heels of her tag team victory alongside Soho against Anna J A S and Tay Mello in a street fight on Rampage. While Nightingale received some flack online from Miss Table Spot with Jay, it pales in comparison to the uproar over the image of the blood-soaked Soho that went around social media after the match. Now, Tony Khan has spoken on a variety of topics. He's spoken first on CM Punk's contributions to All Elite Wrestling. CM Punk, of course, has not been seen in AEW since the infamous post-all-out media scrum earlier this year, which saw him vent about AEW executive vice presidents, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, and Colt Cabana. His comments that night also led to an alleged physical confrontation between himself, A. Steel, the Bucks, and Omega. That resulted in Steel losing his job with the company, but there's been no official comment on AEW regarding the situation. AEW owner Tony Khan was asked about Punk when speaking on the Maggie and Perloff show, saying, quote, I haven't been able to talk about CM Punk recently, Khan said after being quizzed on the future of the two-time former AEW World Champion. I definitely think everything he has done in AEW has been great, and he's been out injured, but he's been one of the great stars in AEW. For fans wanting answers regarding Punk's status with the company and whether he will return, Khan said, quote, I can't really comment on it. Now, Punk himself has given mixed signals regarding his feelings towards the company, such as getting ice cream with AEW star Brody King, but also mocking AEW's ratings and the world champion MJF. Meanwhile, others such as Dax Howard and Jade Cargill have spoken about Punk's positive influence in the locker room. On the flip side, there are reportedly some top stars in the company, including Chris Jericho, pushing for him not to come back. For now, Punk remains on the shelf rehabbing his triceps injury. Once he's healthy, what the future holds for him should become clear, but as of right now, we still don't know. Speaking of, we still don't know, could the Khan family purchase World Wrestling Entertainment? Well, with Vince McMahon officially back with WWE and looking to facilitate a sale of the company in the coming months, a list of potential buyers has been making the rounds, with one such interested party perhaps being the Khan family. Of course, the Khans currently own NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars, Fulham FC of the Premier League, and WWE's closest rival, All Elite Wrestling. With the family's name entering into the rumor mill, AEW CEO Tony Khan addressed these intriguing reports in a new interview, saying, quote, I I am interested in the news that there's certainly potentially a sale process, Khan said on the Maggie and Perloff show. Certainly, I think we've, the Khan family, shown that when there's acquisitions, transactions, we are capable of making the big purchases. The AEW president noted that his billionaire father, Shahid Khan, has done a great job putting resources into the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Fulham FC to, and Fulham rather, the Fulham, Fulham FC to build them up. Khan added that he and his family have also shown they can build a company from scratch with AEW. 
Now, meanwhile, with the rumours continuing to swirl about the Khans being in the mix on WWE, Khan disclosed whether or not it was a realistic idea, saying, quote, AEW is my main focus, but certainly when that news is out there, I think it's very interesting. I think, you know, it's very preliminary to talk about that process, but if there is a process there, which it sounds like there may be, then I'm interested in being part of it, certainly. Basically confirming he would be interested. So keep an eye out on that one. That's certainly a bit of big news there. Now, he was also asked about FTR. Now, obviously, FTR, they're on hiatus at the moment. FTR, they lost all of those championships they held last year. The Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships, the IWGP, the AAA Tag Team Championships over the course of about a month. And Howard announced on his podcast recently that AEW President and CEO Tony Khan has granted FTR time off to rest and recover from their grueling schedule. The time off will also allow them the chance to contemplate their futures as their AEW contracts are up in April. During a recent appearance on In The Click, Khan also addressed his desire to see FTR return, saying, quote, I do hope to see FTR back, Khan said. They do need some time to recover from what was one of the most intense years of resting any team's ever done. The schedule they went through, all the different places they work. Khan also labelled FTR's double dog collar match against the Briscoes at Ring of Honor Final Battle last month as one of the most barbaric matches he's ever seen, quote, So I think for those guys, we want to see them back in AEW and want to see them heal up and come back at 100%, Khan said. We're really looking forward to that. Hopefully, I think they're a great team and would love to have them back. Basically saying he wants to have them back, but it's up to FTR. They've got to make the decision on what they're going to do. Now, one name that was in AEW and has departed, of course, is William Regal. And he's now a current WWE name. And he's spoken about the AEW plans that didn't quite end up coming, coming to fruition. Of course, Regal joined AEW at the company's Revolution event in March of 2022 before becoming the manager of the Blackpool Combat Club stable, featuring Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Wheeler Utah, and Claudio Castagnoli. He later left AEW in December of 2022 so that he could return to WWE to be with his son, who features on the company's NXT brand as Charlie Dempsey. Speaking on Distraction Pieces podcast with Scroobius Pip, in an interview that was recorded a few weeks ago, Regal spoke about his unrealized plans in AEW, quote, as you know, I left one company I've gone to another it's like a blink of an eye I start back with WWE again and it's like nothing has ever happened and nothing has changed in the slightest it's weird anybody that is listening that's young I don't uh, I know you don't like listening to older people make the most of every second you have on this earth it really is you get to a certain age and time goes so quickly and we waste a lot of it sometimes you think I'm going to make the most of it even trying to make the most of it you end up not making as much of it as you can and it's gone I just had a wonderful seven or eight months with a real good group of my friends and boom, it's gone in a blink of an eye. I haven't even caught up with any of the stuff we've done because it's just the way it is. If you're into the wrestling, it was a bit convoluted and finished off the way it finished off where I've been in AEW, but I'm back with the WWE by the time you hear this. I've had people asking me to do things. There is a lot that happened this year and a lot of things that made me go, I'm quite happy not being in the limelight. I have been for many years. I had my time. I had a nice little gig with NXT for a long time where I just showed up occasionally and then in the pandemic I was used a lot more because we had to go into survival mode and there were certain characters and it changed things a little bit I said don't use me as much if you don't mind it should be about the talent not about me this interview will be the last thing I'm doing unless WWE asked me to do something as myself I'm doing nothing else about anything or resting for at least a year I'm happy with that that was one of the things in the last months of AEW it was getting far too much about me it should have been about the talent I was with not about me. I'm quite happy being in the background. All it is is grief. I've had my run. I couldn't have had a better last few months as far as TV and doing that, but I didn't go there with that intention. The intention was to do something different and it started off the way it did, but I didn't end, I expect it to end up being this thing that it was for the last seven months where I just became talent. I went there with a very different plan because I was asked to go there to help out in a different capacity and that never transpired. Okay, I'm done. Now, Regal now serves as WWE's Vice President of Global Talent Development. Shawn Michaels is notably the Senior Vice President of Talent Development Creative. And it's interesting that basically Regal saying there that he went there not really as a talent. He thought he was going to be some kind of coach and it didn't really materialize that way, which is certainly interesting too because there had been reports that Regal didn't want to coach. But he's saying that that's what he went with. The, he went to AW for. 
Now, speaking of Regal, Brian Danielson, because of MJF attacking William Regal on his final night in AEW, wants to face or is hoping to face MJF for the AEW World Championship at Revolution in a 60-minute Ironman match. Well, uh, on last night's edition of Dynamite, we've got a glimpse at what likely will be our main event of Revolution. After Brian Danielson's victory over Tony Nese on the show, MJF told him that if he can win every match between then and February, um, he would earn the shot at MJF's title at the show. That was on the January 4th episode of Dynamite. Now, Brian, since then, has faced a variety of opponents. Last night on Dynamite, Brian was victorious over Bandido in an incredible match before MJF appeared on the Titan Tron, or the Tron, it's not Titan Tron, because that's Titan Towers, um, the Titan Sports, telling him to be scared of the monster behind the mask. After the segment, Brian's next opponent was announced as Ring of Honor Trios champion, Brian Cage. MJF spoke to Cage backstage, where he handed him money to help break Danielson's arm. The match will take place next week on Dynamite uh, on TBS, so... Maybe Danielson gets an injury. Maybe they're doing an injury angle as they get into Revolution, but it's going to be Danielson versus MJF at Revolution in that Ironman match for the AW World Championship. Now, speaking of Dynamite last night, a massive upset on the show. Top Flight, of course, have been having close encounters with the Blackpool Combat Club in recent weeks, truly testing the young stars amongst some of the best of all elite wrestling. Dante and Darius Martin were again tested against some of AEW's top stars on last night's show when they faced off with the Young Bucks in tag team action. This was the Young Bucks' first two-on-two tag team match since they lost the AEW World Tag Team Championships to Swerve in Our Glory last July. The rust of being in a standard tag team match clearly affected the trio's champions as Top Flight managed to score the upset victory over the Bucks. This comes just one week after the Elites made a comeback win in the best of seven series against Death Triangle to capture the AEW Trios Championships. As I mentioned earlier on, the Young Bucks wore black armbands in tribute to Jay Briscoe with a Ring of Honor special in tribute to Briscoe set to be taped uh, after the show last night. Finally, Orange Cassidy defended his All-Atlantic Championship successfully last night on AEW Dynamite. Of course, Cassidy made his way to the ring first, not accompanied by Best Friends or Danhausen, while Jay Lethal also uncharacteristically made his way out alone. Excalibur then said that Tony Khan said that if Jeff Jarrett, Sanjay Dutt or Satnam Singh were not able to be at ringside or our Sanjay would be fired. However, when the match began, the three men made their way through the crowd and took a seat in the crowd. Danhausen then came up to Sanjay dressed as an usher to check the legality of his ticket before attempting to eject them from the crowd. The best friends eventually also took a seat in the front row for the match, with Dan Housen removing his Usher costume to join Cassidy at ringside. Cassidy ended up winning the match to retain the title. Lethal also wrestled the match with a black armband with Jay Briscoe's name on it after a memorial graphic opened the show. So there you go, guys. That's the latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's AEW news stories in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.